grade sevens, you're with Helen, and of course that means it's natural sciences. So what are we looking at today? Today we're looking at tasting acids and bases. So are you ready for this? Let's begin. Now remember in our last lesson we said that Chemicals can be divided according to, or classified according to the property of whether they're acidic, basic, or neutral. Now, how could you tell whether something is an acid, a base, or neutral? Can you recognize these substances in your everyday life? Well, interestingly, you can feel on your skin and even taste different substances and you can recognize the substance based on the way it feels and on the way it tastes. And you can say, yes, this is an acidic substance or a neutral substance or a basic substance. But remember what I told you last lesson that certain acids have a higher concentration of hydrogen ions in them and bases would have a higher concentration of hydroxide ions and this, the higher the concentration of these ions, makes these acids and bases rather dangerous. So whilst you can use your hands and your tongue to tell if something is an acid in a base, I want to give you a huge safety warning. Not all substances are safe to touch and taste. Please do not touch and taste substances that may harm you or that you have not identified as being safe. And I'm going to use our frog here with his tongue whenever we talk about substances that are dangerous and that you should not touch and that you should definitely not taste. But you're going to find that many acids and bases are present in your lives on an everyday basis. And certainly these products you can handle and some of them you can taste. Now, what's your favorite food? Hmm? And which tastes do you prefer? Would you prefer eating sweet bananas or bitter dark chocolate? Do you like salty potato chips or do you prefer to have the sour flavor of yogurt? How does your favorite food taste and how do you taste your food? And is this whole sensation of taste important to us? Why do we have this sense of taste? Well, it all comes down to your tongue right? Your tongue is your organ that allows you to sense the different flavors of food. And we need to understand that although we can separate certain substances and say, well, this is definitely sweet, or this is definitely bitter, salty, sour, many of the food substances, in fact, most of the food substances we eat are combinations of all of these flavors, which is what makes the food so interesting. So when you eat something like a pizza, you've got the, the, the nice salty flavor. You might have a little bit of sweet pepper on your salty pizza. And so it's the combination of tastes that makes food our favorites. But if we look at analyzing the food, we will find that food tastes are very much linked to the chemical con uh, characteristics of whether they are acids or bases. So let's do a little bit of biology now and look at our tongues. You, after this lesson, are going to go to a mirror and you're going to rudely stick out your tongue close to the mirror and you're going to examine your tongue and you will see that on the surface of your tongue you've got little papillae. Papillae is the plural and one of them is simply a papilla. So p 
pepelli for plural, pepella for singular. And inside these little pepelli, we have what we call taste buds. Now, taste buds are simply very specialized nerve cells. And our nerve cells, remember, are the parts of our body that communicate information from the outside to our brain. And our brain does calculations and interpretations and we come out with sensations like vision, touch, hearing and of course taste. So how does taste happen? Well, chemicals in our food, remember, we're looking at chemical characteristics, so it could be acids and bases. These chemicals dissolve in the saliva that's inside your mouth. And the dissolved chemicals stimulate the nerve cells in the taste buds. They cause the nerve cells to react in a certain way, depending on whether they're acidic or basic. These nerves in your taste buds then send the message on to your brain and your brain interprets those messages as the sensation of taste. So how does taste work in terms of different food substances? Well, your tongue will experience acids and bases as different taste sensations. So if we look at our lemon character, who is symbolizing acids, we find that acids have a very sharp, sour or tangy taste. If you can imagine biting into a lemon, you may even find if you're imagining it well enough that your salivary glands are producing saliva and that you're almost anticipating the sharpness, the tang, the sourness of the lemon. So any acid, if we were to taste it, it would have a sharp, sour or tangy zap on our tongues. But remember, we're not going to be tasting acids that are dangerous, only acids that are in naturally in our food substances. How will our tongue experience a base? Well, bases tend to taste a little more bitter. And you've probably tasted bases uh, uh, in, in a mistaken way, not intentionally, if you've been washing your face or washing your hair and you've got some soap in your mouth, that bitterness and that slippery feeling, that is an indication that the substance, the chemical substance, is a base. Water is a neutral substance. Remember, we talk about acids as having hydrogen ions and bases as having lots of hydroxide ions. Well, neutral substances have a balance of hydroxide and hydrogen ions. So they don't taste sharp, they don't taste sour, they're not slippery, and they don't taste bitter. So if you think of drinking water, it doesn't burn or sting your mouth. It's also, it hasn't got a bitter taste, but it is a neutral substance. Now, is being able to taste food important for our survival? We know that we can taste foods that we might buy in the shop, that our caregivers or parents make for us, or that we, we make ourselves. And a bit the food substances are prepared from ingredients that we can trust and we know. We're not going and just making up food substances out of weird stuff that could harm us. That is what happens today. But I want you to think back to 
ancient, ancient times where there weren't shops that sold or prepared foods. This is safe for you to eat. This is not safe for you to eat. Think about harvesting products and food substances from the environment. Now, let's think about the fact that your survival as an ancient human depends on your ability to taste. So we know that if you eat green fruit or fruit that is unripe, it's going to cause your stomach to ache. You're going to get cramps and it's going to hurt you. It's going to bloat you with a lot of gas and you're going to feel ill with eating the green fruit. If you eat fruit that is ripe, then it has a, a better effect inside your digestive system and your, your body is able to digest the ripe fruit and extract all the nutrients from it that it needs. So yes, we can see that that banana is unripe and we can see that that banana is ripe from its color. But what if we couldn't see the color of a substance or the color of a fruit to indicate to us that this is green and this is ripe or unripe and ripe? Well, the taste would help you because when we have ripe fruit, we find that it is far sweeter than unripe fruit which can be bitter. And so we can distinguish between the ripe and the unripe fruit and save ourselves lots of tummy aches by eating fruit that tastes sweet and tastes uh, in a way that we, we find it attractive as humans. Remember that some fruit can be ripe and tasty and look good from the outside, but inside that fruit could be decaying or it could be contaminated, for example, with caterpillars or the larvae of certain flies. And so in this case, we certainly don't want to eat the food. We don't want to eat meat that has been contaminated with fly larvae. We don't want to eat fruit that has been contaminated with caterpillars, for example. And so we find that decaying food tends to be more acidic because the little organisms that are causing the decomposition or rotting, they produce acids. And this acid has a different taste to the rest of the food. And it alerts us to the fact that, hold on a minute, this milk is tasting sour. The milk has gone off. The meat is tasting wrong. The fruit is tasting wrong. And in this way, we make sure that we are only going to eat food that is healthy and not rotting or decaying, and in that way, affect our health negatively. So we're slowly starting get, to get into the uh, idea of being able to distinguish different substances according to taste and feel. But remember the warning, you don't taste or feel substances that you don't know the identity of because certain acids and bases can be very dangerous for your health. In our next lesson, we're going to explore different examples of acids. But for today, that's it for Natural Sciences. Goodbye.